Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. I'm part of the click, isn't everybody? <laughs> yes! 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 I, I got an idea, yeah. Beat up John Cena! Give me a hell yeah! I pull a little bit of the bubbly. Too sweet! following episode is scheduled for one fall, and it is for your listening pleasure. This is In The Click. What's up, everybody? Baby Hugh here, back at it for a very special episode of In The Click. And you know, this is my favorite time of the year. We are on the road to WrestleMania, the most stupendous two-night event in WrestleMania history, WrestleMania 38 is happening April 2nd and 3rd from Dallas, Texas. And that is why I'm excited to be talking to a friend of the show from Friday Night SmackDown, 8 p.m. on Fox, WWE superstar and author, the SmackDown Warrior, but most importantly, my buddy, Drew McIntyre. How's it going, Drew? Uh, marvelous. It's number eight. Number eight. <laughs> Almost as many appearances on this show as Charlotte's won titles. <laughs> exactly. I know. It's uh, it's kind of trippy, man. I, I was just thinking about this the other night. I was like, man, it was six months ago. You and I finally got to meet in person uh, uh, in Las Vegas for SummerSlam. So it was finally cool. It's like I, I felt like our, our friendship has really grown as far as, you know, the phone calls, Zoom calls, and then to finally meet in person. So uh, uh, thank you again for making the time today. I'm, I'm so happy. And Congrats once again. Your book, your memoir, A Chosen Destiny, My Story. The paperback version is out now. You can get it through Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all other online bookstores. I'll post all the links on our website, 1077thebone.com as well. So Drew, um, you know, please just tell me, you know, what what inspired you to write a book about yourself at this point in your career? Uh, I mean, I'm sure we probably talked about this when the the book came out initially. Mm-hmm. Um but it, it was like not my idea um, to, to write a book. It's awesome that I have one, but it never crossed my mind that, uh, you know, at the peak of the pandemic, everybody's shut indoors that I thought to myself, man, it would really be beneficial to the world right now if I could write a book and talk about that Scottish guy from WWE. So that certainly never crossed my mind. Is that something I would do until I was retired? But when a you know a third party company came to WWE and mm-hmm. explained to them and seen a bunch of my interviews outside of the company and um, where I'm talking about my life story and the struggles and the the ups and downs and the times where I was in a dark place and had to fight my way back out into the light and you know said we really think you know, Drew's story could help a lot of people if he's willing to to put it in book form and I spoke to the wife about it and we agreed uh, to do it with. The rule being, uh, when I want to be as open as possible. I don't want to lie in there. And uh, wrestling will be the foundation of the book. But it's more about the lessons uh, that I've learned throughout my life and my career. I want to be the main focus to try and inspire some people and to you know, understand that no matter how bad times get, and there is that light at the end of the tunnel. And trust me, your future self was so tough and look back and say, I'm grateful those difficult times even though it didn't feel like it at the time because it made me who I am today that's the, I know that to be true because that's the reason I'm the person I am today is all of those lessons and I'm very grateful for everyone as tough as it was uh, to, to go through some of them at the time yeah no and I, I agree with you 100% I mean I know I told you what last year um, it, I think it was such a, a powerful thing for you to, to release this book and you know a lot of people are going through dark times over the last couple of years so for someone to, to release that, I'm glad you did that because then people could connect and hopefully, um, you know, by w- reading your story, they can turn their life around. So I'm really glad you did that. So did you find it very therapeutic to kind of open up and finally uh, talk about your life and go public with it? Yeah, for sure. Um, it was cool to go through everything um, and, um, you know, have my wife remind me, you know, what I was actually going through because in my mind, um, certain parts of my life and my career were a lot 
different to reality. Like, I guess I'm really good at blocking out the negatives. So mm-hmm. I had it in my head that, oh, I was fired from WWE. And then I decided to take over the wrestling world. And I did. Yeah. And she mm-hmm. was like, well, that's not quite how it went. And like, she remembered all the fear and anxiety and what I was going through emotionally um, and reminded me of all that stuff. And um, I was able to kind of relive it again. And I wanted to put it down on paper and just mm-hmm. you know, tell people that, hey, like, I went through the same thing. And it was, um, awesome to go from the start of my life and career and I started recognizing how many people have really helped me get to where I'm at today and without you know my support system my family friend I wouldn't be who I am and uh, where I'm at today so it was really cool to go through that stuff and have a chance to say thank you um, to everybody um, and the biggest thing again of all um, was putting down those lessons as openly as I possibly could which is a conversation I had again with the wife I'm like you know once I, I do this I'm not just big tough wrestling nothing affects them mm-hmm. so this is putting everything I'm telling you like out to the world and you know, she said well it's up to you but the, the truth is they're one uh, going to be more relatable like who they can relate to a 6 foot 5 hairy 270 pound Scotsman yeah. and two you're going to help some people and I said well that's what it's all about let's do it and just put it all out there work and all yeah no and and that's uh, like I, I, I can't tell you enough how much respect I have for you and you know, as I was looking online, you know, I was prepping for this. I saw a lot of people have like similar comments that they really see you as like a walking redemption story, the perfect embodiment of what a wrestler should represent, a true workhorse. And you really are an inspiration just from your journey from the bottom back to the top. So I'm just curious, though, what was you would say your darkest point in your career and your life? And how did you turn that around? I mean, it was certainly around about the time. Uh, I got fired and kind of leading up to that point. Mm-hmm. You know, I never told everybody, you know, what was going on. I certainly never told the company yeah. what was going on and they would have, you know, got me the help that I needed. But um, it all stemmed from you know, my mother uh, getting sick and eventually passing. You know, that's when everything started falling apart when she got sick and I never realized how bad it was affecting me. Being away from home was hard enough so I'm so close with my family, especially my mom and they're in Scotland. I'm in America and now she's sick and I'm seeing the effects is having her uh, to her on Skype calls, et cetera. And it was really, you know, tearing me apart. And I started dealing with it by drinking and holding how I was feeling inside. And when she passed, I was just off the deep end and constantly drinking all the time and not trying to improve myself in any way um, business-wise. And eventually got fired, and rightfully so. I had to recognize it was on me. And it's not like I just changed after that. I started working really hard professionally and, made a good name for myself um, as, you know, Drew Galloway, the wrestler. But mm-hmm. personally, I was still an absolute train wreck, and it took a broken neck that I detail in the book. Mm-hmm. And being at home, the first eight weeks I've ever had stationary in my life, I went from high school to university, signed by WWE the same year, I got my degree, to fired, to be the busiest wrestler in the world, and now I broke neck, I'm sitting down for eight weeks. And my wife, you know, told me, Drew, you're going to crash and burn. You know, just burning the candle at both ends, the whole candle's on fire with gasoline. Yeah. on it and also I'm going to end up leaving your ass if you don't get yourself together and then I you know, had a good hard look at myself and understood that you know it doesn't matter it does matter but it doesn't matter what she thinks or everyone else thinks if I don't want to change I'm not going to change and I want it to change and I, from that day um, during that period where I was out with a broken neck I started looking at myself honestly I started talking more about you know my feelings what's going on inside that I used to hold into her and it really you know helped saying things out loud and I started, you know, changing my diet, um, something that I needed to improve upon. I was okay, working your body, and almost instantly I saw the difference. Brain cloud I had in my head, I felt was permanent, just lifted. Mm-hmm. I could see things more clearly, and within a few months, you know, WWE came calling, and at that point, I didn't even see me going back. You know, things were going so well outside the company, I just didn't see me returning. I saw myself in Japan, mm-hmm. but things just went so positive, um, and it seemed like the right move to make, and Thankfully, the way things have worked out over the past few years, that's yeah. the right move to make. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and as I told you many times before, I have so much respect for you as far as being WWE champion, face of the company, during arguably the darkest point in the company's history, the world's you know history as far as this global pandemic. And, you know, you were champion and just a great role model for a lot of people. That's why I recommend everyone get your book. If you're going through tough times, reading your story can help, I think, you know, help people out and turn things around. So um, I know we're limited on time. I do have a couple WWE related questions I got to ask you. So last weekend, Elimination Chamber, you had your match with Madcap Moss. A little bit of a scary moment. You did the Alabama slam on Madcap. He landed on his head. 
I, I just got to ask you, what was going through your head in that moment? And then, you know, what happened backstage? Did you guys talk? I mean, just that whole incident with Madcap. Yeah, I mean, I didn't realize how bad it was until I saw the clip back. I understood that, um, let's just say, he zigged when he should have zagged. Um, <laughs> and the move didn't go the way it's supposed to go. I was aware of that, but I did not realize like how bad it was and the fact that you know, he was okay. I did double check that. I could see in his eyes he was good. He was double checked, make sure he could finish the match. Mm-hmm. And after the fact, uh, you know, the necessary uh, precautions were taken. And thankfully, you know, he's all good. And that's the thing about this job. All it takes is uh, you know one second, and everything can everything can change. And um, people have their opinions on wrestling, mm-hmm. etc. But we were out there, you know, live action stuntmen. Um, you know, putting on those uh, contests that were trained to such a high level that you don't think twice about it, like when you're watching it, because everybody's so good at what they do. But sometimes in those moves, if one thing goes wrong, somebody tucks. And um, when that's not the plan, um, horrible things like that can happen. And I'm just very thankful that he's okay. Gotcha. And, uh, and, okay, that's glad to hear. Um, I, I got two more quick things as far as, you know, wrestlers. Um, yesterday, Kind of breaking news all over the web and, you know, uh, wrestling websites. The announcement that Cesaro uh, is leaving the company. Just kind of get your thoughts on just him in, you know, parting ways with WWE. Yeah, I mean, that's a shame. Um, Like so many people come and go from the company. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. And we always see each other down the line. But it sucks more when it's, you know, a friend um, and somebody that really want to wrestle. That was my number one match. (laughs) I think his number one match. Both been wrestling for 20 years, but never had a singles match. So we're going to have to wait a bit longer. It'll happen eventually. But, um, you know, he's got his family. He's got his new kid. Um, and he's going to be just fine. He's far too talented not to be. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, as one person leaves, there is a rumor. Someone else coming back to WWE. And before, I've always felt it was kind of forbidden to ask you about this. But, you know, there is a rumor. Cody Rhodes, your former uh, tag team partner that you won tag team titles with so your thoughts on potentially him coming back to the company yeah i mean i read all the the headlines like everybody else online i think 20 percent of them actually happen <laughs> if he comes back you know good for, good for him that, that'd be awesome like i know what it feels like to be gone from wwe feeling like you should have achieved more and coming back to do it and just knowing him um the way i know him he probably feels the same way about unfinished business so if it materializes then awesome um you know he's such a talent and be more than welcome on the roster. That's great to hear. And one last thing. So I was last night looking up, there's a video posted on WWE last year, your top Claymore moves. I love your Claymore, the finisher. It's one of the best, just all time great finishers. Do you have a favorite Claymore finish that you did? I mean, I, I have a couple in my head, but I would love to hear from you, your favorite one. Um, see, there's one that I see most often is Cedric Alexander. Mm. Takes one where he spins inside out. I know Ricochet mm-hmm. has also taken that uh, bump a few times where they kind of shoot and start press. When they take the clay bar, but there's one Cedric took so freaking fast. It was awesome. And one with Kofi was coming out the air off the top rope. It was pretty cool. And Elimination Chamber last year, AJ Styles was going for his phenomenal forearm and I caught him out the air with the clay bar. And when I saw it back, I was like, ooh, that was pretty freaking cool. <laughs> And so, yeah, there's been a, been a couple uh, that uh, I, I like to see in the old highlight reel. Even last week where I had the sword in my hand yes. against Madcap, where I was like, my goodness, this does not seem like it's possible. Uh, this giant heavy sword. <laughs> like, I don't know if I can do it within my hand. And when I was able to do it, I saw it back. I was like, all right, that was pretty cool. Outrageous, but pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad you said that one. Because last week with the sword in your hand, I was like, oh, my God, that that I've never seen that before. That's an awesome new you know, uh, uh, a version of you performing that move. But, um, and of course, you eliminating Brock Lesnar from the Royal Rumble a couple of years ago. That always stands out yes. as well. Uh, Drew, I know you got a busy day. I'm running out of time here. Uh, I just want to thank you again for making the time. And, um, you know, me personally, I'm, uh, I'm going through some personal family stuff. And so, like, I definitely turn to you as someone, as, you know, as a role model, seeing how you go through tough times and you've been able to have a, such a positive outlook. And so... Um, I definitely respect that. And, you know, I'm definitely kind of uh, looking up to you on just saying, you know, there are uh, uh, be optimistic and turn things around for the better. So I just want to thank you for that. And listen, I encourage everyone get your book. It's in paperback version now. 
The Chosen Destiny, My Story. Get it online, wherever you get your books at. And hopefully, Drew, my goal, I'm trying to coordinate if I can pull it off to get to Dallas, Texas for WrestleMania. So hopefully we can continue this conversation in person, okay? 100%, buddy. I'll make you number nine. But thank you, as always. <laughs> awesome, Drew. Uh, today. It's been awesome, and, and we'll get in a studio eventually. Like, we've done it in person, but we'll get a studio like a... Uh, down the line. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I would love to get you in studio and we can have like a little more longer form conversation. As you know, I have so many questions to ask you, but uh, no, thank you again for everything and I'll talk to you soon, okay? Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Take care of yourself. There you have it. Thank you again to WWE superstar Drew McIntyre for being on the show. Go get his book, A Chosen Destiny, My Story. The paperback version is out now through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all other online bookstores. I'll post the links at 1077thebone.com, as well as in the description of this podcast. Make sure to follow Drew McIntyre on Facebook at Drew McIntyre, Twitter and Instagram at D McIntyre WWE. Watch WrestleMania 38 happening on Saturday, April 2nd, and Sunday, April 3rd, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, streaming live on Peacock in the U.S. and the WWE Network everywhere else. For tickets and more info, go to WWE.com. You can watch Drew McIntyre on Friday Night Smackdown at 8 p.m. on Fox. Make sure to follow WWE on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. All right, Clicksters, let's go home now. Remember to subscribe to In The Click on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We're also on a ton of other major podcast platforms. Help the show out by rating, reviewing, leave a comment, and share the podcast. Subscribe to In The Click's YouTube page, watch the videos, hit the like button, and leave a comment. Please follow In The Click on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search for at In The Click. Email us at intheclick at gmail.com. Once again, thank you for tuning in and for all the support. And that's the bottom line because Huey said so.